That day, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued a single-line notice, application rejected. Typically, when a drug developer submits a marketing application to the FDA, the documents are formally accepted first, followed by months of review leading to an approval or rejection decision. However, in this case, the process didn't even reach the starting line. The application was denied before any formal review could begin. The company receiving this notice was Immunity Bio, a U.S.-based immuno-oncology firm. The subject was its flagship product, Anctiva. Based on an interleukin-15 superagonist mechanism, this drug is designed to simultaneously activate natural killer cells and T-cells while avoiding excessive suppression by regulatory T-cells, an advanced design in the field of immunotherapy. The drug received formal FDA approval in April 2024. The approved indication was for Bacillus calmet garin BCG, unresponsive, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer with carcinoma in situ, with or without papillary tumors, under the condition of co-administration with BCG. Commercialization moved rapidly. From mid-2024, insurance coverage expanded across the U.S., and in January 2025, the drug was assigned a permanent J-code for reimbursement, significantly improving hospital access to prescriptions. The results were reflected in the numbers. In the first half of 2025, Anctiva's unit sales surged more than 246% compared to the previous half year, and quarterly revenue reached approximately $26 million. For a single product to accelerate this rapidly post-approval is highly unusual, even in the U.S. market. Under these conditions, Immunity Bio submitted a supplementary application to expand the indication from the original patient population to include those with papillary tumors only. Given the similarities in pathophysiology, mechanism, and administration between the original and target populations, such label expansions are usually accepted for review and then processed with additional data if needed. That is the industry norm. But in this case, the FDA responded with an outright refusal to accept the application. The key point here is that this was not a rejection after review. It was a decision not to even begin the review. This is a highly irregular procedure, and the rationale behind it has not been officially disclosed. This mystery suggests several possibilities. The first hypothesis is that the FDA may have considered the papillary-only patient group as a fundamentally separate indication from the previously approved one. However, given the high pathophysiological similarity, this interpretation lacks logical grounding. The second possibility is a technical issue within the submitted clinical data or its analysis, but in most cases, the FDA 